I hope it's going to be good. And, uh, well, <coughs> statistics from the exam from a year ago. At the first glance, there isn't much of a difference, but there is, I have noticed. A year ago, the peak of the distribution fell on Bs, and this time on As. And uh, one cannot not wonder, double negative, I love it. <coughs> what might have been the reason, and there are actually many reasons, well, maybe I've been doing a better job, spending hours on changing lectures, maybe you have found a better strategy than those guys to get prepared for the exam. Maybe the exam was just too easy. Maybe grading strategy was clearer. We will never know. You know, in physics, <coughs> we always know a relationship between a cause and effect because physics is science. Education is not science. There is no science of education. <coughs> so, um, We can pick whatever reason we like the most. I think it's me that boosts my confidence. You should think it's you. And uh, this is a review. Uh, <coughs> you actually saw those rays if you've been here on Friday. Uh, every t type of a curved mirror has a special point. We call it a focal point, and uh, for a concave conversion mirror, the focal point is a real point in space where all rays cross each other, converge. And the distance from this point to the top of a mirror has a name, the focal distance, and it's positive because it's real. For a convex or diversion mirror, we also have a special point but at that point, not actual rays converge. Rays actually diverge after the reflection. But the extensions, those invisible imaginary lines, converge geometrically somewhere anyway. At that point, we call a virtual, or in the past, we called it imaginary focal point and the distance from this point has a name focal distance but it's supposed to be negative and the magnitude of the focal distance for all mirrors is equal to a half of the radius of a sphere we cut the mirror off and we used this fact to draw four possible situations four possible diagrams when an object is being placed at different locations case one, case two, case three, case four, and for each situation we only need two rays, any two. So pictures at the top show you many possible rays, but we only need two to draw a diagram. And I say most convenient rays are one which travels parallel to the principal axis, because after the reflection the ray has traveled through the focal point, or the extension of that ray should go through the focal point. And the, a second one, which goes to the top of a mirror, because for this ray, this mirror looks like a flat mirror, so it bounces at the same angle. And when we know two rays, we can find the location of an image and look at the image, and we can say everything. Plus, since all pictures have lots of right angle triangles. As an exercise, you can prove this relationship, pure geometry, nothing different, nothing else, uh, you know, nothing special. And this equation works for any type of a mirror. We just have to keep an eye on the values of these. This might be positive or negative, depending on the mirror. The, uh, Object distance is always positive because an object is always a real thing. But the image distance also might be positive or negative. Positive for a real image, negative for a virtual image. 
And this, what we call a magnification, this is a definition. The size of an image divided by the size of an object. We just need to remember again. We choose this thing to be positive. We always place an object upright. The image might preserve the same orientation, be upright. In that case, this will be a positive number. If the image is inverted, that will be negative. The second part comes from triangles. Again, a geometry. They all have the same angles, so we can relate those uh, variables. And uh, <coughs> use any expression we want to. This is actually a very convenient relationship which relates distances and sizes. We just need to remember this variable as that variable might be positive or negative depending on the case. And of course, all we have to do is just examples. So let's start from this question. <clears throat> this is about a concave mirror, by the way. You can buy a concave mirror at a store if you want to look in your eye. CVS, Walgreens, even Home Depot. <clears throat> and uh, if you look in the mirror, making closer and closer, you actually can see that uh, the image <coughs> flips. And we saw it should be happening. An image, uh, the real image is inverted, the virtual image is upright. However, in order to see that image, we also use another optical device, the lens, our eye. And we're going to talk about lenses today. So, I don't see people drawing diagrams. You see, Step one, draw a ray diagram. It's physics. Step one is always draw something. <clears throat> Even on the exam, I only wonder if this symbol represents your instantaneous mood just before the exam or your regular mood all the time. And I think some of the grad students, I don't know who, was adding some elements to some of your symbols. I don't know who you can figure it out. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> so your picture might be changed or commented. Everybody's human here. So you should start from drawing the ray diagram. Ray diagram has to start from a mirror. And it has to preserve the relationship between important distances. Now, an actual mirror, we know, concave mirror, should look like this. Concave mirror. So we have a mirror. However, when we draw a diagram, we don't usually draw an actual mirror. Uh, first. I always recommend draw a line which represents the principal axis. And the mirror is located somewhere. somewhere, And uh, it's just easier to draw a straight line. So we would know where the reflection would happen. But in order to indicate the type of a mirror, we kind of bend a little bit the ends. So we know this mirror curves like this. You don't have to do that, but actually drawing an actual curved mirror um, might lead to confusion. So we don't use actual things in physics. We use models, and this is a good model of a mirror. And uh, this mirror has a focal distance distance from the top of a mirror to the focal point. 
And this distance is equal to, now, I'm listening. Hmm? Which is? Exactly. So this is when sometimes people make a mistake. So this is our, the radius. But the focal distance should be equal to a half of that. In this situation, since the mirror is concave, conversion, the focal distance is positive. And now we need to place an object in front of it 15 centimeters away from it. So 15 centimeters is actually right between the focal point and the mirror. That's how we read it. We need to make a translation from what we read into the drawing. And uh, the size of this object, also 15. Well, numbers are arbitrary. Yeah. The method works for any situation. Now, <clears throat> we need to draw at least two rays. All rays are supposed to travel from an object toward the mirror because the rays which travel away from a mirror never hit the mirror. They not form an image. So this is not wrong. No, this is useless. <clears throat> and uh, I always recommend using two rays so one supposed to travel parallel to the principal axis toward the mirror because after being reflected, it's supposed to go through the focal point. For me, it's a natural moment to check your answers. And a, a, a second ray should travel, well, the second most convenient ray should go toward the top of a mirror. Now you can see why this model of a mirror is convenient. Yeah. We know when this light ray interacts with the mirror, it doesn't know about anything beyond that point. So for that ray, the mirror is flat, plane and uh, it should reflect at exactly the same angle. The angle of reflection is supposed to be equal to the angle of incidence. The ray number one, the ray number two. Sure we says we got up almost fifty fifty distribution, but uh, what's not good about it? Only 28 responses, so let's wait. Yes? You say 40. Still almost 50-50. No, this one. Ray number two, well, technically any reflected ray is based on the properties of a plain mirror when a ray is being reflected by a plain mirror. The law of reflection says the incident ray reflected ray and the normal to the mirror lie in the same plane and the angle of reflection must be equal to the angle of incidence. There is a reason for that and we'll talk about it later. But at this point, this law has been derived from many, many experiments. That's it. All we need is a mirror, a laser, laser pointer and protractor. It used to be a lab like that but it just takes too much time for so few information. <clears throat> so
So for this array, number two. We just apply applying this load directly. Now do raise converge. That's a question to everyone. Do the race converge? Thank you. When the rays do not converge, there is an there is a, an action, a procedure which must be done every time. We have to extend the rays in opposite direction. There is no light behind the mirror. There is light at the end of the tunnel. But there is no light behind the mirror. So those are fictional geometrical lines which will cross somewhere. And this location represents a virtual image of this point. And we can repeat the same procedure technically for all points of the object. So this line, segment of a line represents an image an object, an image. So what do we call this distance? The object distance is always positive. This is the focal distance, which is positive for this mirror. This is the image distance, and that is behind the mirror for the virtual image must be negative. And uh, what are the features, properties of an image? Upright, virtual, larger than the object. So this is the height of an object. This is the height of an image. The height of an image will be positive and will be greater than the height of an object. So magnification will be will be positive actually will be even greater than one. That's what picture says. Yes? Can hear you. Real means those, ray, er, those rays exist. Light really travels through those points. How can we see light? Well, we have always two options. Number one, we can place our eye and look at it. So, of course, it will burn the retina. We, be, we will be blind, so don't do that. But we can place a piece of paper I forgot to mention, all right, later. <coughs> a piece of paper and use it as a screen. And in that case, we can look at the screen and we will see a figure exactly like you're doing right now. <coughs> That's what real means. And a virtual means it only exists in our imagination since we have that property, ability, imagining things. That's what we do, we're imagining. There is no light behind a mirror. If we go behind the mirror, I don't see anything. Of course, there is no light. It, get, it doesn't get through. However, it doesn't mean it's impossible to see it in general. No. All we need is converge these rays. But to converge diversion rays, we would have to use a second optical device, like a second mirror or a, sec or a lens. So <sighs> that's the difference. With a picture like this, where we don't measure anything or take any angles, how can we be sure that we didn't just draw the picture wrong to get lines that don't converge? You have to use very uh, well, first of all, I would recommend using the paper with grid. Then I would recommend using rulers. 
and protractors. That's it. The more accurate your picture is, uh, the less probability of making the mistake. But you are absolutely right. People make mistakes because those rays not really straight. They get bent. Or the mirror actually <coughs> presented like an actual mirror instead of being a model. And in that case, anything may happen. <coughs> this theory, based on an assumption that the mirror is really, really, really large, so there is some curvature, but all reflection happens close to this region. Rays reflected close to the edges, they just don't go to the focal point anymore. They go somewhere close to that. That's called aberration. We don't talk about that. So <coughs> just try to be as accurate as possible. Yes, and we always can solve it, and we will. And algebra should tell us if our picture is correct. Yes. Uh, what is the statement you're making, please? Like whenever f, the focal point, is like to the left of the object, like the object in between the focal point and the mirror, like it's a rule that they don't converge. Was that true or not true? So if an object is between the focal point and the mirror, the rays do not converge. Okay. Cool. Well, that's exactly what we see right here. That's a proof of your statement. If you want, if you want, if you want to, um, that's actually a useful practice. If you want to make, uh, to be more confident, you just have to try it a uh, couple of more times. What's going to happen if you shift an object a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right? And in that situation, you see, if you move an object a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, it doesn't affect this ray. Yeah, it's still going to travel away parallel to the principal axis, so this ray will not be affected. However, if you move this object a little bit closer, so this angle becomes larger and this ray deflects more away. If you move a little bit to the left, so this angle closes, but still they will <coughs> diverge. This is what we called case number three. All we do just copy the same drawing, copy the same reasoning. Case number three, and technically we don't really have to do that as long as we have covered all four cases. We have covered all, all possible cases, all of them. So, and uh, here, the image is virtual. And uh, all we have to do now is just solve it. Well, let's use this. So <clears throat> let's add one more. So very quickly, I got to make a copy. <coughs> D O F D I. 1 over f supposed to be equal to 1 over do plus 1 over uh, di. This is 30, and I keep centimeters. I can use the same units for everything. That was 15. This is what we are looking for. Mathematics for this situation is identical to mathematics we used for calculating equivalent resistance when resistors were in parallel or equivalent capacitors when capacitors were in series. So it's exactly the same type of mathematics. Yeah, let's do it once. We need to calculate this. 
and that's supposed to be equal to 1 30 minus 1, 1 over 30 minus 1 over 15, which is my, uh, 1 minus 2 over 30, which is negative 1 over 30. Now we got to flip it, and that gives the answer is consistent with an agreement about all parameters. Because the image is virtual, the image distance must be negative. That's what we get automatically. We could have do algebra first without doing any picture theoretically and still get a negative result and that would give us a hint. Okay, it's supposed to be virtual. Uh, and where else should we find the size? Yeah. It's supposed to be larger. So <clears throat> we don't really need, we could have to calculate the magnification, but all we need is to calculate the new size. So that was 15 centimeters. That was 15 centimeters. Now, different minuses have different nature. This minus is a part of an equation, but uh, this minus comes from the fact that the image is virtual, the image distance is negative, so minus and minus makes it positive, 30 centimeters. Because this number is positive, that again confirms the fact that the image is upright, not inverted, and it is larger. Twice larger, actually. That's it. Done. All right. Next question. I'm going to for a moment switch. Okay. Oops. Yes. Star Wars action figure, 15 centimeters tall, is placed 45 centimeters in front of a concave mirror that has a radius of curvature of 60 centimeters. What did we do? What change has been done? Same figure, same size, same mirror. We just moved an object. So we placed it differently at a different location. At this point, you know what to do. You need to draw a diagram. Your diagram will be identical to one of four diagrams, which we call case one, case two, case three, case four. Nothing else might happen. So the principal axis, the mirror, which is almost plane, but still has some curvature, concave, with the focal distance positive and equal to 30 centimeters. 30, 60, this uh, actually is a center of that sphere from which we cut it out. Uh, so the object is placed somewhere between here. 
And uh, ray number one. For the ray number two, some people actually use a ray which travels through the focal point. Again, it doesn't matter which two rays we want to use. Any two rays, if we draw them correctly, tell exactly what should happen. But uh, so, see what's good about this ray as well? There has to be symmetry in nature. When the ray travels parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it goes through the focal point. When the ray travels through the focal point, after the reflection, it should be parallel to the principal axis. So. If ray travels through the focal point after the reflection, it should travel parallel to the principal axis. Eventually, they all should cross at the same point. That point gives an image of this point, of the top. So this ray should go like this. So this image, this point is an image of this point, and we can repeat the same procedure. That gives us an image, an object, an image. If we need, we will have to list always the property of an image. So it is real now because it is being formed by actual rays. Actual light is responsible for the presence, for the existence of this image. So again, we just place a screen at the location of an image. And we look at the screen, and we can see it. And uh, <clears throat> so, real, inverted, but still larger than the object. And of course, we can write exactly the same equation again. The equation is the same, and for magnification, the equation is the same, uh, but we just need to use a different number for the object distance. I would recommend at home to derive a standard algebraical solution for the image distance. So here, what should we have? What's the common factor? So we need to multiply this by 2. Oops, minus plus. So we need to multiply this by 2, and we need to multiply this by 3, and that will be 90. And that will be equal to 1 over 90. That's this distance, 90 centimeters. Positive, because the image is real. For real images, distance is always positive. However, the height now will be equal to 15 times a minus because of the equation 90 over 30 45 negative 45 so it is larger in magnitude but it is inverted Yes. Shoot. What took you so long? Yeah, but it ah it's here in this in this calculation. Okay, so this ca that calculation is correct. Focal distance is thirty, so I used focal distance by mistake. So that should be thirty. Thirty. Thank you. Still larger, twice. Yeah. Thirty, negative thirty. 
but I would get a partial credit for that. Any questions, please? Well, I hope that the last problem on mirrors, you should read and find the difference between this situation and the previous situations. There's one word which makes a big difference. What word is that? One word in this sentence makes a big difference. Well, let's uh, <clears throat> just uh, check all words. A star. So far, so so. So far, everything is the same as the uh, problem number one. 15 centimeters tall is placed. 15 centimeters. Stop me when you in front of A. That's what the brain always does. It's actually how we supposed to read each problem. It, it's It's... You know, it's a practice which is very important. Should I stop or should I move ahead? Uh, stop, stop right there. Thank you. I don't want to move ahead. <clears throat> so we have found that word which makes a difference. The mirror is different now. It's not convex, it's not concave, it's <coughs> convex. So we know a real shape of that mirror should look like this, but again, we don't use an actual mirror. We use a model, and for the model of a mirror, we use the same vertical line, but now we bend the ends in opposite direction, slightly away from uh, an object. So we place an object 15 centimeters away, and uh, now we need to draw rays, ray number one, Ray number two. For the ray number two, actually, there is no difference at all. Still, here, this ray thinks it hits the plane mirror. So, the question is, how should we draw the ray number one now? And, of course, we have so many different options, like... If we need to make a choice, first, we always need to know from what, because otherwise it's not making a choice. It's just accepting the things the way they are. So can we make a choice? Which ray should we use as a reflected ray? What do you think? Can we, make, can we choose one of these rays to be the right one? No, no, we can't. Ah, okay. What is missing here? What is missing? A very special element of the picture which has a specific name, so we have to call it, we have to add it. What is it? Focal point? Absolutely right. A mirror must have a focal point. But for a diversion mirror, the focal point we need to use is the virtual. It's behind the mirror. So I actually, if I want to preserve my distances, that's supposed to be 15, and that's supposed to be uh, 30. So I actually should move it to a little bit farther away. When we draw pictures, we should try to preserve the distances as accurate as possible. So 15, 30, 
focal point will be somewhere here, a virtual focal point. Now we can choose the ray. All we have to do is to draw an extension, an extension. Well, that extension, you see, what's interesting, we don't know yet which ray to use, so we don't know the extension of which ray to draw. But we know that extension must travel through the focal point, and we know that extension must begin here. Here, the reflection is happening. So we know from geometry if we have two dots, there's only one line which connects those dots. But now we can use that extension to make a choice of a correct reflected ray number one. So the, uh, those choices would have been wrong. But there is always the right choice. Well, not in life, in physics. Now, now, everything is very clear. We have to draw an extension for this ray here. This dot represents the location of an image. An image is virtual because it's behind. It is not formed by actual light. It's only in our mind. So uh, upright and is smaller than the object. And we can write those equations. And we can write numbers. And I uh, have to stop right now. <clears throat> I hope you know when I stop and walk left, right, left, right, it means I'm waiting for something, for a scream. Yes. What should they make negative? How do we call it? The focal distance. We need to know the dictionary yeah. of physics. This distance has a name. We call it focal distance. The magnitude of this is equal to 60 over 2. However, since the mirror is diverging, the actual number should be negative. You don't pay attention to little detail like this, you make a mistake. If you pay attention to everything, that's it. Now we just have to solve it. So negative 1 over 30 minus 1 over 15 should be equal to 1 over this. Again, common factor is negative 1 minus 2 over 30. Negative, so... Flip it, make it negative, 30 over 3, negative 10 centimeters. And if my picture is accurate, and this more or less accurate, we can see that was 15 centimeters. This is 10. It's closer. Any questions? So that was a diagram we, we call case number 4. When you have to solve a problem like that, you just pick a case and just do it. Yes? So that's also a virtual image? It is not also. It is a virtual image. Every image which is not formed by actual rays, which is only formed by fictional lines, extensions, is virtual by definition. Well, so in addition to reflection, there is another phenomenon which happens when light approaches the interface, a boundary. If the medium transparent, some, of, some portion of light might be reflected, but certain portion of light might be transmitted. And when it happens, we can see that light 
bends. Can we? Why can you buy this? Don't go to Home Depot. BJ's. Or whatever you use. <coughs> Can you see it? People who are late. Technically, are not here yet. All right, probably not a very clear picture here. You can probably see it here. So, in this simple device, light travels from, well, right now it travels from water into air. And uh, you can see. It bends, actually, at certain point it reflects. Here, light travels from air into water. And uh, again, we can see certain bending. <coughs> there is a little bit brighter device which I can use. So. I have to keep it closed so people wouldn't drink it because it's not water. Do you know what it is? Guess. What else people like drinking? Tonic. And the quinine in tonic makes it visible. Turn it off. So let's see. We don't see anything above, but if I add some fog, well, I'm not sure about you, but I, I can see the blue ray. And when it bends, when it travels through the boundary, it bends. And this phenomenon bending, well, now from water into air. can see it. <clears throat> this phenomenon has a name. Refraction. And uh, of course, hundreds of years ago, people started study this phenomenon. It has no smell. So. And it's not toxic. Otherwise, you couldn't buy it in Toys R Us. <clears throat> to f to f uh, find the relationship between different parameters of this experiment, all we need again is a laser pointer and protractor. And, uh, well, every time, nowadays, if it's hard to run an actual experiment, you can use an app. So here, uh, we can change an angle, let's say 45, and we can see how it changes. the angle in water. So of course, this ray has a name, the incident ray, reflected ray, and these angles are equal. This is a re refracted ray. That's the angle of refraction. You can see those angles are different. And <clears throat> if we run a simulation or do experiments, the first fact we conclude is this. 
for any two media, this ratio turns out remains constant. It doesn't depend on the angle. So water, plastic, glass, diamond, doesn't matter. Two media, if you set two media and start shining laser at different angles and then calculating this ratio, it will be the same. Well, first of all, if it's the same, we got to give it a name. And if we choose air at the first medium, this ratio has a name, index of refraction of the second one, wherever it is. Index of refraction. And of course, all indices of refraction have been measured by now. And uh, <clears throat> every time when we need to find an index, which, which is, we, we, we can just Google, that's it. So glass, uh, diamond, water, index of refraction of water depends on how much salt in it, so it might be different. <clears throat> but now, when we know the index of refraction for each medium, finally we can make a general statement. This is the law of refraction. It has two parts. First part again. The incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal to the interface lie in the same plane. And this product is the same for both. The index of refraction of the first medium times the sine of the incident angle will be equal to the index of refraction of the second medium times the sine of the refracted ray, we just must remember, by definition, all angles are measured from the normal. People sometimes forget this and measure angles from the boundary. That's wrong. This equation assumes we use these angles. Well, anyway, that's just a result of many, many, many experiments. So let's just solve a couple of problems. Like in my demonstration, we shine a laser on the boundary between air and water. So the angle of incidence, this one, 46 degrees. And that's what we need to calculate. So the equation, Snell's law, tells how we should relate these. So, index of refraction of the air times sine of 46 should be equal to index of refraction of water times the sine of the angle we are looking for. So, 1 times sine of 46 divided by 1.33. Now, we can take the inverse sine of it. That will give the angle. And the angle will be equal to I thought I had it probably somewhere else. <clears throat> so now I have to wait until someone tells me. Thirty-two point seven degrees. That's it. What's going to happen if we use the same media but we change the direction? You have a question. Do you have a okay? So moving on. Now, like in my experiment, we shine the light in water on the boundary between water and air. So now, the water becomes the medium number one. And now the angle of incidence is in water. And now, this is what we're looking for. However, 
the equation doesn't depend on how we shine the light. The equation is always the same. What changes is which medium is number one and which medium is number two now. The medium number one now is water. The medium number one is the one in which light approaches the boundary. That's it. The medium number two is the one when the light travels away from the boundary. That is air. And now we just need to solve the same equation, but uh, numbers are slightly different. <laughs> Please just tell me the number. Now, do you think it will be the same as before? Of course not. These examples are very important conceptually. When light travels from a medium with low index of refraction into the medium with high index of refraction, we call it air-water situation. Ray bends toward the normal. And when light travels from a medium with high index of refraction into the medium with a low in the index of refraction, the ray bends away from the normal. So what's the number? 76? 73? 73 degrees. This is always a case. It's very important to remember. The only difference, uh, the only difference can be observed when light travels right on the boundary at 90 degrees to it. In that case, it doesn't bend. If light travels like this or like that, parallel to the normal, it just gets through without any bending. That's it. That's the only exception. Questions, please? Well, <clears throat> the real physical reason for the refraction actually is the fact that light travels differently at different, at different speeds in different media. This is a model. Those are like light particles. This is air or vacuum, and this is glass. When they low, low, light particles entering glass, they slow down. And we know now why. We know. Light is a combination of electric and magnetic field. And uh, very dense material has a lot of charges. So light starts interacting. That interaction slows it down. So in a medium, light travels slower than in vacuum. And uh, if <coughs> light travels at a certain angle, it has to bend. When it travels through the boundary, It travels at a different direction. <clears throat> and the index of refraction is just equal to this ratio. This is the speed of light in vacuum, a fixed number. This is an actual speed of light inside an actual medium. So we actually can measure how fast light travels in glass or water. We just need to measure the index of refraction using protractor and laser beam, and then calculate this number, which is kind of very, very cool. So simple setup, and we can study internal properties of light. So, Plus, <clears throat> exactly the same phenomenon 
happens to any kind of waves. Yeah. We talked about sound waves. So if we have sound traveling like in, in water to air, speed of the sound is different. So we would observe exactly the same phenomenon, kind of sound refraction. So <clears throat> well, now we got to use this theory. Next step, what's happening when light uh, travels through an optical device? That's what we call a prism. A prism. So we shine a laser parallel to the base of this prism. Here, we should observe a phenomenon we call refraction. So what do we have to do? We have to draw a normal. Normally, everything is happening in air, and the prism has index of refraction greater than one. So this is air-water situation. Light should bend toward the normal. So it doesn't travel in the same direction. It bends toward the normal. Here, we should observe a second refraction. Here, now, light doesn't travel in the original direction. Now, uh, it should bend slightly toward the new normal. You know, yeah, there is old normal, and there is a new normal. This is the new normal for the new diffraction. And we don't have to do any algebra. All overall, we can see that when light travels through a prism in air, effectively, it bends toward the base. That's all we need to know. Now, uh, a straightforward application. So here, light does not bend. So it travels through. The only refraction happening here. Every time when we need to solve a problem related to refraction, we must draw a normal. So where do we draw the normal? At that point where light reaches the boundary. Because drawing normal here doesn't make any sense. It is not wrong. It is useless. Now, without bending, light would be traveling like before, but it's a water-air situation. Light travels from medium with high index of refraction into the medium with low index of refraction, which actually has no unit, unit less, just a number, because it's speed over speed. So it should bend away. Bend away means like this. That's it. This is our immediate goal, theta 2. And that was theta 1. The index of the incidence, uh, uh, the, the angle of incidence has to be measured between the normal and the incident ray. The angle of refraction has to be measured between the same normal and the refracted ray. And now we need to write an equation, the Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. What number should I write for the index of refraction of the first medium for the refraction happening at the second phase of the prism? Hmm? 
what number should I write here? 1.5, that's, that's all I waited for, 1.5. For this refraction, for this refraction, the first medium is glass. And the second medium is air. This equation still has two unknowns. One is what we are looking for. So it's a very common situation. We, we have ran in similar situations many, many times before. We don't know it, but we need it. So what do we do? We find it. But we don't have any equations. So we have to do a geometry. We have to look at the picture. We have to look at the picture. In this picture, uh, this is 90, this is 30, so this is 60, and uh, this is 60. That's supposed to be 30, just triangles. So 1.5 times sine of 30. Now, if I take the inverse sine of that, that will give me the angle. This is what I could do, 1.5 over 2, sine of 30 is 1.5. So, the inverse sine of 1.5 48.6, well, let's round it up to 49 degrees. <clears throat> now, the deviation angle of a device is an angle which is measured between the ray approaching a device and the ray leaving the device. A device might be anything. In this situation, it's a prism, it could have been set of mirrors, lenses, doesn't really matter. So in our situation, a deviation angle supposed to be measured between this green line. That's how light would have been traveling without the deflection and the actual Greek letter Psi, capital, a very common letter for a deviation angle. So what it should be equal to? So th this is 30 because it's opposite to this. So one line, second line, so two lines cross, that's 30. This is uh, 49, so this will be 49 minus 30. For the deviation angle, we always have to do some uh, geometry. So it will be 49 minus 30, 19 degrees. <clears throat> so when light travels through this prism horizontally, it deviates from the original direction by 19 degrees. You know you don't have to wait until I ask any questions. If you have a question, you just have to act. By the way, this is a good point to mention uh, one of your feedback. So I read them. I always appreciate. I agree with all of them. But I want to say, <clears throat> some student says, uh, TF sometimes late or missing office hours. If that happens, and they people, why wait until the exam to act? If you wait for 10 minutes and no one there, that's when you should start acting. So on the board, there's a list of TF, TFs, and you can just send an email to that guy, copy me. Why are you not here? I'm waiting for you. You should be here. It's your responsibility 
to be here. So that's it. Act. And uh, going back to the question I asked yesterday, why are we here? And I don't mean, again, humans on the face of the planet. That's a different conversation. I mean, we are, you and I, here. I will tell the same answer, to succeed. And that actually is not really related to that paper we call a diploma or the amount of knowledge stored in the memory. It's directly related to actions we enact when we have a problem. That's it. So, moving on. <clears throat> what? That's just a fact. Like, again, this is a morning. This is a fact. Is it a good morning? That's a hope. <clears throat> now, moving on. A different optical device. Very important, a lens. Well, <clears throat> again, the reasoning is very straightforward. How does a lens look like? Well, like this, for example. You know how it looks like because I know everybody at some point went to Walgreens, CVS, or even Home Depot and bought this thing. Magnification glass. So you can feel it. It's thick, thicker in the middle and thinner on the edges. So that's a standard combination of, uh, well, in this situation, two surfaces. What's happening to a light? Well, a lens can be represented as a simple model by two prisms. And we know what's happening to a light traveling through a prism. It bends toward the base. That's it. Now, we can manufacture another type of, type of lenses, which is very important from practical reasons, because we use them. These lenses thinner in the middle and thicker on the edges. Well, again, first of all, everything is happening in air. So in this situation, a lens like that we can model as a combination of the same prisms. We just move it yeah, differently. So this ray should bend toward the base of that prism. And this ray should bend toward the base of the second prism. But now, what we say? Every device has a line which has the same name, principal axis. So, for a lens like this, when light traveling through, through a lens is parallel to the principal axis, light rays should bend toward the principal axis. For a lens like that, they should bend away from the principal axis. This phenomenon has a name, conversion. This phenomenon has a name, diversion. So this is a conversion lens. This is a diversion lens. That's it. Same pictures. And let's just take a look. What do I want to do? This is what I want to do. Don't be scared. This is the same ray box we've used for mirrors. Now we can use it for lenses. <coughs> and this lens, see? bends rays toward the principal axis. And we can see they travel through the same point, or almost the same point. We call this point, of course, a focal point. Now, what's going to happen if I flip the lens? 
nothing. It's still thicker in the middle and thinner on the edges. edges. So exactly the same situation. And there is another lens. Is there? Thinner in the middle, thicker on the edges. It diverges light. The good thing about lenses, they're transparent. So light travels through easily. And after it travels through, we know for sure what is happening. Now, <clears throat> of course, uh, every conversion lens forms a real image. And it's not going to be a surprise for you that the equation which relates an object Location of the lens and uh, location of an image is the same as equation for the mirror. So right here I have a bulb with a very long filament. And right here you can see an image. It's a sharp image. Of course, it's not going to be sharp if I move a lens differently, but there is another very specific location when the image becomes sharp again. And of course, uh, you can see that right now the image is smaller than the object. And uh, here the image is larger. The filament is shorter than. So <clears throat> a distance from an object to the lens has a name object distance. The distance from an image to the lens has a name, the image distance. And the distance from a focal point to a lens has a name, the focal distance. And the equation which relates these distances is exactly the same as the equation for a mirror. It just has a different name. We call it lens equation. So this, again, a picture of a model of a lens, diversion lens. <coughs> and uh, technically, things could have been slightly different if we placed it in water. But we're not going to do that. And uh, <coughs> for a lens, if you go to a store, you don't know, you don't read the information about focal distance. It tells you dioptries. Every lens <coughs> has a certain optical power, but this is a definition. One divided by focal distance is what we call dioptries. For a conversion lens, it's positive. For a diversion lens, it's negative. And of course, uh, if we need to draw a diagram, we need to use only two rays for a conversion lens. That's the principal axis. This is the focal point we need to use. And the ray, which originally was traveling parallel to the principal axis, points, uh, travels through the focal point. A ray which travels through the focal point after the lens travels parallel to the principal axis. That's what we usually call number three. This ray is more convenient because it doesn't bend at all. It just keeps traveling. Now here, the ray is supposed to bend away from the normal. 
but the extension of that ray should travel through the virtual, virtual focal point of a diversion lens. However, ray number two still very simple. It gets through the middle point of the lens without bending. That's it. So now we can use these rays to draw ray diagrams for a lens. Case number one. Principal axis, a lens. Do we see a lens? No. Because I don't draw an actual lens. I draw a model. But I need to show what type of a lens is this. So for a conversion lens, I imagine two surfaces, which go like this. But I only show the beginning of those surfaces. Now I need a focal point. Now I need to place an object where. Again, we have two situations which will give a real image and one situation which will give a, well, this is virtual image. We can place an object here, case number one. I'm going to use only one picture for all three. We can place it, an object here, case number two, case number one, case number two, and we can place an object here, case number three. For all three cases, this ray which travels parallel to the principal axis, after traveling through the lens, it must go through the focal point. That is a definition of a focal point. The only difference is how the second ray travels. So, case number one. Really need a ruler. It's very important to draw it as accurate as possible. work. It should go through the middle without bending. Case number one image real, inverted, smaller, case number two, no, as accurate as I could, case number two image, still real, still inverted, but now supposed to be larger. Case number three. If you do it as accurate as I do, you see now rays do not converge. Now they diverge. Every time when rays diverge, we don't use actual rays. We use those fictional lines, which we call extensions. We actually need to draw those extensions until they cross each other somewhere. And this will give us an image, case number three image. Because it's not formed by actual light, it's a virtual image, but it is uh, larger than an object, and it's upright. 
And uh, as you can see, for every diagram, we have triangles. And for example, this angle is equal to this angle, this angle is equal to that angle. So if we do some geometry, we get the equation which says we just call it differently. We call it thin lens equation. For a thick lens, uh, focal point doesn't exist. For a thick lens, they don't cross through the same point. There's some region. But if the lens is thin enough, focal point is really a point for us. It's not really large. And uh, <clears throat> again, there's a slide which says our standard agreement for a converging lens, f is positive. For a divergent lens, f is negative. Focal distance is negative. For an object, distance is always positive. For an image, distance is positive when image is real. Distance is negative when image is virtual. When image is upright, the height of the image is positive. When image is inverted, the height of an image is Negative, nothing different at all. The only difference is the picture which we have on the left and on the right. Yeah, for the for the for the lens, the pictures, the picture has well uh, two parts, and real stuff happening on the right. For the mirror, real stuff happening on the same side. For the lens, the virtual stuff happening on the same side, on the left. For the mirror, the virtual stuff happening behind the mirror. That's the only difference between a mirror and a lens. OK, case two, case three, case four. Equations, the summary. Done. These are the only cases, the only situations which exist in the universe for any mirror or for any lens. That's it. So <clears throat> I urge you to practice, draw, to draw all four cases on your own for mirror, all four cases on your own for the lens. If you're confident with drawing your ray diagrams, you will be all set. Well, thank you very much. We're done for today. So if you didn't pick up your exam, you weren't here today. This one, this one, we're going to keep the whole cart because Grace will use it later, oh. maybe next week. Just this, you got to take by hands, just be careful. He also... <laughs> Tick, 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 tick.